I'm Brett Hollander, and I'm honored to be with you today hosting today's ceremonies. It's hard to believe this iconic ballpark is turning 30 years old. I'm sure some of you remember the uncertainty we felt when the Orioles decided to move on from Memorial Stadium. Memorial Stadium laid the foundation for what was to come at Camden Yards. Thanks to legends like Frank, Earl, Jim, Eddie, Cal, and Mr. Oriole himself, Brooks Robinson. And it didn't take long for Camden Yards to feel like home. Now, any baseball fan knows that this ballpark is a must visit. Before stadiums existed as concrete donuts in parking lots far from downtown, lacking any real connection to the cities where they were built in, but Camden Yards changed that. There have been 22 major league ballparks that have opened since. And they've all tried to replicate what the Orioles created. Amenities for our modern lifestyles while nodding to the old fashioned touches of baseball's yesteryears. It can't be surmised any better than by Camden Yards moniker, the ballpark that forever changed baseball. While the architecture of our home is unparalleled, Camden Yards cannot be defined by majestic structure alone. It is more about the moments that have unfolded on these grounds. Since the first game on April 6, 1992, we have been exceedingly privileged to stand witness to some of baseball's legendary moments. From the Ironman's 2131 to the double in game two of the ALDS. These are plays that leave an everlasting impact on us, allowing us to believe in the impossible. And these on-field moments bring us to the heart of Camden Yards, that it's more than just a ballpark, but a bedrock of our community, where we meet with our neighbors and celebrate what makes Baltimore home. Within these walls, we are shielded from an ever-changing world around us. The beauty of baseball is that we do not measure in time, but in familiar patterns of three strikes and three outs and three times three innings. For a few hours every day, we sit and enjoy the O's, casting aside the worries of tomorrow to create indelible moments with our friends, families, and the people we cherish deeply. Maybe you're a longtime season ticket holder who spends every summer here. Maybe it's a time you caught a foul ball from your favorite Orioles player. And maybe it's that time you brought your kid to their first Orioles game, watching their face light up as they walked out of the tunnel and saw the field for the first time. What makes Camden Yards more than just a ballpark is you, Orioles fans. And I'd like to extend an extra special welcome to anyone attending their first game here today. Because it will only take a few innings for you to realize this place is unlike anywhere else. And we're so thrilled to welcome you into our family. As we begin our celebration of Camden Yards, we're thrilled to be joined by former Orioles who have been integral part of authoring the story of this ballpark. First, let's hear from an Orioles legend who, while unable to attend in person, is celebrating with us from afar. Hi, everybody. Cal Ripken here. I am so sorry that I can't be at the best ballpark in the league on this special day. Oriole Park at Camden Yards set the standard for what a great ballpark looks and feels like and has led to so many other wonderful parks around the country. We are so lucky to have this special place right here in Baltimore. I remember when it was being built, and I thought, why do we need a new ballpark? Memorial Stadium is just fine. It was home, and it was the ballpark we all grew up in. 
That changed the minute we walked into Oriole Park. It felt special from the very beginning. I was lucky enough to play about half my career at Memorial Stadium and half at Camden Yards, and has so many special memories from each. Oriole Park at Camden Yards remains one of the finest ballparks there is, and I am so excited for the years ahead. For this team, as well as future generations of players, creating memories for the fans moving forward. Have a wonderful day, and let's go O's. And now we're honored to welcome Orioles alumni who have punctuated the pages of Camden Yards history with their legendary moments they created on this field. Each player will be accompanied by a Birdland member to thank them for their unwavering support of Orioles baseball over the last 30 years. Camden Yards wrote the first page of its illustrious history on April 6, 1992. And this Cy Young winner got the call to throw out the first pitch on opening day. He spent two seasons in Baltimore and will forever remember him as the man who threw a shutout to officially inaugurate the ballpark that forever changed baseball. Rick Sutcliffe, this is eighth opening day assignment. The 1992 season is now officially underway. An historic occasion. Rick Sutcliffe, the veteran right-hander, trying to show the way for the Orioles. In the ninth inning, the Orioles a two to nothing lead, and the crowd at Oriole Park at Camden Yard on its feet. Sutcliffe, one out away. He's one strike away. Sorrento takes a full strike three. The Orioles have won it, and Sutcliffe has the shutout. Sutcliffe, what a performance. Please welcome Rick Sutcliffe. As Camden Yards continued its inaugural season, this center fielder had a career year, earning 1992 Most Valuable Oriole Honors after collecting 24 home runs, 107 RBI, and registering a 276 batting average. He set the bar incredibly high very quickly for what remains one of the greatest catches in the history of this park. Sutcliffe delivers. There's a drive deep in the left center field. Back goes Devereaux. He's back at the warning track. He's back at the wall. Jumps up, and he made a spectacular catch. An incredible catch by Devereaux. The runners have to return, and it's still 0-0. Thanks to Mike Devereaux, who brought it back into the ballpark. A standing ovation for Mike Devereaux. Oriole Park is beside itself. Listen to him here. And he just he just flew. He defied gravity. Please welcome Devo Mike Devereaux. The next several years built towards the Orioles return to the postseason in 1996, the first time Camden Yards hosted October baseball. Those O's were bolstered by this catcher's offensive season of 25 home runs and 73 RBI, a season in which he joined a list of just 23 names that have hit the ultimate grand slam to showcase this ballpark's flair for the dramatic. And it's not over yet. Two outs. Base is loaded. Bottom of the ninth. 13 to 10 Mariners. Three and two the count. And the pinch. Swing and a long drive to left center field. It is gone. A grand slam. The Orioles have won it. A grand slam to win it. Can you believe it? Oh, boy. The Orioles win it. 14 to 13. Yards are just berserk. I mean, you've never seen.
crazy to see my bench. This is one of the wildest games I have ever seen in my life. Please welcome Chris Hoyles. Building off their 1996 wild card success, the Orioles captured the 1997 AL East going wire to wire and facing off with the Mariners in a dramatic division series. This utility infielder spent three seasons with Baltimore, embodying the Orioles' next man up mentality. On October 5th, with the birth to the ALCS on the line, he found himself in the ultimate David versus Goliath matchup, facing one of the best pitchers of his generation, Randy Johnson. And on one swing of the bat, he stunned the baseball world. And you heard to talk about how tough it's going to be to see. Anderson in center, Rebele at second. Fastball hit high and deep into left field. This one is way back there. This one is gone. Hit only four home runs in 228 at bats this year. In fact, he'd only had 13 homers in his whole career in more than 1,200 at bats. The Welcome back, Rebbe Jeff Rebele. After 10 years, Camden Yards had a well-established legacy of playing host to the impossible and the unbelievable. And in 2003, this right-hander got the nod on opening day, unaware that he'd be playing in a winter wonderland. Settle back and enjoy this 2003 edition of uh, Orioles baseball. Got him outside corner with that biting slider. That's the Rodrigo yeah. Lopez that uh, finished second in the American uh, League Rookie yeah. of the Year last season. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Rodrigo Lopez <laughs> saying, wait a minute, this is not how I envisioned it. So we have a snow delay here at Camden Yards. I think that's the first time I've ever said that. And Rodrigo Lopez. So we're going to get back at it. Now the one-two from Lopez. Swing and a miss. Center. It's over his head, and the Orioles win. Opening day, walk off, instant win, Orioles. Welcome, Rodrigo Lopez. <laughs> the early 2000s was a ritual of Utah Street home runs. In 2002, this right fielder. Hit a career best, 28 homers, and in 03, he established personal best with a 277 batting average and 100 RBI, good enough to earn him most valuable Oriole honors. He literally cemented his legacy on Utah Street with two monstrous shots during this era. Here's the one-two, swing and a high fly ball, the deep right field, that ball's gonna go. Out to the flat court and a home run. So Jay Gibbons hits it out, and the Orioles add to their lead. And it's now 9-2 to Orioles. Oh, as Gibbons touched off a monstrous shot. Did he get to Utah Street? See you later. Uh, absolutely rocked by Gibbons. Low middle, Jim, and he dialed it up. Sails out here, I, I believe. Yep, right out there on Utah Street. Please welcome Jay Gibbons. Looking ahead to the 2010s, Burt Lamb began to take flight with a new generation of top tier prospects that made for forces to be reckoned with in the American League East. And on one rainy night in September of 2011, with one swing, this infielder changed the momentum and laid a foundation for what 
and Orioles dominance was to come. He spent four seasons in Baltimore and he specialized in crushing the Boston Red Sox, cementing his legacy to Camden Yards during game 162 with a curse. And now Andino has a chance to possibly win it with a runner at second base. Here comes the 1-1 delivery. Line drive. In the left. Crawford coming on. He trapped it. Here comes Raimold. Here comes the throw. It is too late. And the Orioles have won the game. They did it. They did it. They did it. The Orioles have beat the Red Sox. Two runs. Bottom of the ninth inning. And they're going crazy. And right now it looks as though the Orioles had won the pennant. And the season ends on a walk-off. Please welcome Robert Andino. <laughs> Following the curse of the Andino, Yost began a successful run, peaking with a division crown in 2014. With this pitcher taking charge on the mound for five innings. The Orioles secured, secured their first, their win over the Toronto Blue Jays and clinched the American League East title. Well, it is a lovely night for baseball here at Camden Yards as the Orioles hope it'll be the night that they can celebrate and wrap up the AL East title. Roberto Jimenez trying to win for the fifth time. And he struck him out. We always talk about mechanics, but it's also about emotions. Well, the fans certainly are behind him. Struck him out. And Ubaldo has found him. So he will leave with a 4 to 2 lead, giving the Orioles a chance to win. There's Pierce. And the Orioles are champions of the AL East. Please welcome Ubaldo Jimenez. Last year, he became the first Oriole to hit 30 home runs and steal 30 bases in a season. He manned center field like the best of them. He's not an Orioles alum yet, but we're fortunate to be able to watch him every day. Mullins hits this one high and deep. Center field at the track. This one is gone. There is history. Cedric Mullins stands alone. The first Oriole ever with a 30-30 season. Please welcome Cedric Mullins. And now it's an honor to be joined by two Hall of Famers who brought magic to this ballpark every time they stepped on the grass. This pitcher has more legendary moments than we can count. A five-time All-Star who spent 10 seasons in orange and black, he amassed 147 wins and over 1,500 strikeouts with Baltimore alone. And he was, to put it simply, almost perfect. The 500 left. Payoff pitched its own by the spot now. Markers. Corby hit a grounder up the middle. In the air for the glove of Tony Tarasco. 24 in the book. Line to left base hit. After 25 consecutive hitters retired by Mike Messina, Sandy Alomar breaks up the perfect game. Got it! So close. The baseball immortality, Mike Messina, wraps up a stunning one-hit performance. Please welcome Hall of Famer, the Moose, Mike Musina. And finally. And finally, this eight-time All-Star spent 12 seasons with the Orioles prior to Camden Yard's inauguration, but received a hero's welcome 
upon his return home in 1996, as if it were simply destined to be. Eddie came home and made history, promptly hitting his 500th career home run into the right field bleachers before the Orioles faithful, a moment that stands forever in that orange seat in section 96. For the Orioles, batting six, the designated hitter, number 33. We want to recognize these Orioles heroes who made Camden Yards such a hollow ground of memories for us here in Birdland. On the foundation of their accomplishments, the Orioles build steadily and look ahead to the incredible moments that this 2022 season has already created, as well as the bright future that's in, the, that's in front of this ball club. To celebrate our past, present, and future, with a ceremonial first pitch, please welcome once more National Baseball Hall of Famers, Mike Mussina and Eddie Murray, catching them today, Austin Hayes and Cedric Mullins. All right, Mike and Eddie, whenever you're ready. Two strikes. Once again, we thank our guests for joining us today, and we look forward to the next 30 years of Orioles magic at Camden Yards. Thank you, and let's play ball.